Hi, good afternoon. Thank you. And uh, I want to start by thanking Dr. Shavu and the Georgia um, Vasher Foundation and Society and all of you for the opportunity to speak on behalf of my family and in support of my father, David Rosenthal. You know, and hearing the last presentation, it seems like these um, these cliff note versions of uh, my dad's life are going to um, probably cross talk a lot with Dr. Jordan's um, uh, own passion for vascular surgery and for family. Uh, as many of you know, uh, he did recently pass away uh, after a tremendous battle uh, with Parkinson's. Born April 19th, 1945 in uh, Indianapolis to Ruth and Irving Rosenthal, he moved in and was uh, raised in Great Neck, New York. The stories of his childhood were kind of riddled with uh, a fun-loving, mischievous, carefree boy. To share an example, he once actually uh, flooded his neighbor's basement because he found a lone frog. And if you think uh, about the cold, hard winters of uh, Great Neck, New York, flooding a basement at those days uh, might have been not a great idea. Um, but he really wanted to uh, help this frog, and he wanted to show compassion and mercy. And so he ran a hose from his own house all the way over to his neighbor's house and turned the spigot on at full blast. We still have no idea what actually became of that frog. Um, Still, um, David had a uh, little brother, uh, Robert Rosenthal, and uh, youngest sister, Risa, uh, who I do believe is on uh, this uh, call today. He and his brother were avid athletes and diehard Yankees fans. Uh, he still has a Mickey Mantle glove that hangs in his library. As a father, <clears throat> his love of sports never ended. Uh, he would take us on uh, one at a time to sporting events to see our reaction and strengthen the bond between a father and a son. I remember the Atlanta Hawks games back when Spud Webb, Christian Leitner, Dominique Wilkins dominated. Braves with the, uh, the infield being David Justice, Terry Pendleton, Ron Gant, and arguably one of the best bullpens that baseball has ever seen in Maddox Glavin and even Smoltz. And then the Thrasher games that we all loved as he loved hockey, but that was short-lived as the Thrashers moved out of town and the Falcons games just kept pouring on. Scholastically, uh, believe it or not, David was probably an average student, but remained one of the fastest swimmers in middle school and high school. And it was his aquatic achievements that landed him at Denver. Uh, here he walked onto the university swim team and ultimately earned a uh, full scholarship as captain of the water polo team. Many of you know the man he, um, uh, that became the Vasher surgeon, but you also need to understand that his mischievous behavior, his curiosity and adventuring never stopped. Hence, Denver University actually allowed him to take not one, but two sabbaticals, and I put those in air quotes from college, uh, for one being uh, poor grades and another for inciting a riot outside the women's dorm in the early 1960s as the uh, first snow hit the winter grounds. David lived in the athletic dorm across the quad. His best friends were hockey players that went on to play for the Chicago Blackhawks. Some of you may know these names as Keith Magnuson, Jim Wistie, and Cliff Coral. David didn't do so bad for himself as he uh, missed the 1964 Tokyo Olympic Games by one one hundredth of a second as three other swimmers went on ahead of him. After college, David struggled, as you could imagine, getting into medical school. Well, with two sabbaticals and not stellar grades, Medical schools weren't exactly beating down doors with offer letters. So he did a post back in microbiology. And during this time, he met and fell in love with a beautiful Swedish woman at a summer camp in the Berkshire Mountains of Massachusetts. Birgitta and David would have shared their 50th wedding anniversary next year. Finally accepted to medical school back at Downstate uh, University in New York. Uh, he committed uh, to surgery very early, went on to earn an internship in 1973 at Kings County Hospital, and then uh, residency position in the old paradigm scheme at Tufts New England Medical Center in Boston. Some may not know, uh, know that he originally wanted to actually pursue a career in pediatric cardiothoracic surgery as one of his mentors saw very early on that he had the touch. But when one of his patients expired shortly after surgery, he was broken. He was devastated. He could not uh, pursue this career path. Still very much in love with finesse, technique, elaborate procedures and high octane surgeries, as my father would have put it, David fell in love with vascular surgery. In 1978, he started his fellowship again at Tufts in vascular surgery for peripheral vascular disease. David started and finished his career in Atlanta. 
He served the community of Atlanta for 31 years and saw Georgia Baptist become Atlanta Medical Center uh, and the great expansion of the I-75 uh, interstate, among many other transitions that Atlanta had endured. David was a co-founder of the Atlanta Vascular Society and past president of the Southern uh, Association for Vascular Surgery, as well as Georgia Vascular Society. He loved to think outside the box, and even though um, brought several ideas to functional trials, uh, one was actually beta radiation uh, soaked uh, in a nanoskin wrapped around a vascular anastomosis to inhibit neo-intimal hyperplasia plaguing uh, fissure creations. Another idea was this biodegradable IVC filter that would essentially turn into a bare metal stent at six, nine, or even 12 months, depending on a thickness of a nitinol suture securing the apice of the, uh, of the filter. It went through animal and human trials and was going to have the only FDA approval for prophylactic use before it was actually bought out by industry. The year I was born, 1982, my father started a vascular fellowship, training over 20 fellows in addition to the residents of Atlanta Medical Center. David's proudest accomplishments was his sons. <laughs> um, excuse me. Second uh, may have been a tie between the Ironman and trainees, for, his, for he was a consummate surgeon educator. And third may have been serving in the Army during Desert Storm. Only a few years into practice, at the age of 39, David began training to be a triathlete. His goal was to qualify for the elite Ironman competition in Kona, Hawaii. He trained for a year and was uh, elated when he learned that he made the cut. At that time, my brothers and I, uh, Michael and Matthew, were only two years old and he was still running a full-time practice. David was one of three featured athletes on a national televised broadcast of ABC Wild World, uh, Wild, Wide World of Sports. Before the race, the AJC did a feature story about the uh, four-year-old surgeon who had decided to take on this huge physical and mental challenge. The question everyone asks me is why? My dad responded, sometimes I honestly don't know. This is a direct quote from that, uh, that article. It's an, it's an individual event. It's a personal test for survival. If I can finish this upright, I will have achieved my goal. Little did it he know that roughly 30 years later, the once, tri uh, the once triathlete Ironman would be tested one final time. It wasn't until the summer of 2010 at my medical school graduation, my uncle uh, and my aunt were there when I saw his shuffling gait as he walked ahead of me uh, going to the ceremonies. I remember telling him to pick up his feet when he walked. It was then that I recognized that his ailments was something more troublesome than just simple sciatic neuropathy for which he had a laminectomy done because he felt like his legs just weren't functioning. After 31 years of practice, countless accolades, over 300 peer reviewed publications, dad laid down the knife due to Parkinson's dyskinesia. He just felt awkward at the table. His quest for humanity over uh, a devastating blow for his pride uh, as this was a prideful man whose motor dexterity defined him. He was with the tenacity of being a former competitor athlete Ironman that he fought this disease for over 11 years. He went un under the knife himself to, uh, to get a deep brain simulator at one point just to see his sons and grandchildren grow. He truly loved vascular surgery. And this is the part where uh, a lot of you probably understand and know where he came from. And if you ever heard him speak about his career, he would say it was vascular surgery that gave him so much, not the other way around. He would be operating today if he had his faculties. He always wanted to be a part of something more than just cold steel and skin, something bigger. He wanted to build a legacy that would continue to grow, continue to educate. Whether he was, uh, whether he has been a mentor, a peer, or simply a friend, many of us in this room have been touched by David Rosenthal. My father was more than just a vascular surgeon to me, of course. Through his tenderness, patience, and devotion. Dad instilled in his boys the very virtues that he has spoken of internationally. Perseverance, dedication, and commitment to one's goals and dreams, and to conduct oneself with unfaltering integrity. With grace, power, and resilience, he showed us that in every obstacle was an opportunity. These lessons passed on to all who trained under him, all they called him friends and father. And as a father of two young ones myself, I understand the sacrifice and love that he somehow always had time for us. 
time to take us to sports, sporting events, time to talk, time to just be there, time I wish I had more of. I know with absolute <clears throat> certainty that dad would wish one thing for us all here today. Be present in every moment. Enjoy the journey. Never pass on an opportunity to be great or at least have a damn good joke to tell if you do. He is my hero. The day I told him I wanted to be a surgeon, he shared something incredibly powerful with me. Son, he said, there's no nobler calling than taking someone in their darkest hour and restoring them to health. I live by these guiding words and through your generous donations and dad's honor, his legacy will continue uh, and those aided by this foundation. And from the Rosenthal family uh, and extended family, we are very appreciative for this uh, opportunity and thank you for including us on this, uh, on this day. I appreciate it.